Folks, welcome to Statistics. What's up folks, welcome to the next lecture of Statistics today. Alright folks, welcome back to our next lecture in Statistics. This guy right here is Ted. He represents the United States in the Olympics. And he's pretty good at skiing. So let me give you Ted's stats, shall I? So Ted competes in two types of races downhill and something called the slalomi which I'll write in green slalomi and no it has nothing to do with the fish so Ted is really good at skiing and he competes in these two different types of skiing races so in the downhill he has uh, 101.42 seconds so that's how long it takes for him to complete that race and for the slalomi he's a bit better he takes 87.93 seconds to complete the slalomi, which is a kind of skiing race that takes place in the U.S. Olympics. But just how good is good? How good is Ted? Well, to answer that question, we got to look at his competitors. And we got to see what the general, uh, the, his general comp competitors' times are. So we can compare him to his competitors using the mean and standard deviation. So what's the mean time for downhill racers? Well, it turns out they're not skimping here. The mean time for his competitors is 101.8 seconds. The standard deviation is going to be 1.83 seconds. And so immediately we can find out what Ted Z score is for the downhill skiing race. Because remember, to compute the Z score, all we need is the data value and we need to subtract the mean from it, divide by the standard deviation. Well, what's our data value? Our data value is gonna be 101.42, or I'll just write 101.4. And what's our mean? Well, our mean time for this downhill race is gonna be 101.8, so 101.8. And divide all of that by our standard deviation of 1.83 seconds. Go ahead, plug that and chug that into your calculator. And what are you going to get? You're going to get the z-score, which has no units, by the way. And in this case, it's going to be minus 0 0.21. That's our z-score. And that's Ted's z-score for downhill racing. All right, so Ted is good. How about for Salome? Well, before we get to Salome, let me first interpret this downhill z-score for you. What is this actually saying? Well, this is saying Ted is minus 0 0.21 standard deviations away from the mean. So if most people, if most people uh, take, I don't know, a 108, 101.8 uh, seconds to do the downhill racing, Ted is around here. Ted is around here because he takes much less time, right? He, he's uh, minus 0 0.21 standard deviations to the left of the mean. So he takes less time and therefore he's much better. But let's see which sport Ted is better in. Is he better in downhill racing or is the slow loamy? Well, to answer that question, let's go ahead and calculate Ted's Z score for the slow loamy. Well, to calculate the Z score, we need the mean and the standard deviation. What's our mean going to be? Well, it's going to be 94.2 seconds for Ted, or rather for his average competitor and the standard deviation for his competitors is going to be 5.28 seconds okay so with that being said let's compute Ted's z-score for Salome racing so his z-score is going to be the his data value of 87.93 I'll just write 87.9 minus the average time which is 94.2 divided by the standard deviation of 5.28 calculate that out and you're gonna get the z-score of minus 1.2 okay so this Ted guy is good but which sport is he better in Salome or downhill well look at your z-scores which one is Ted which z-score is bigger which z-score is more unusual which data value is more unusual well the bigger your z-score, the more unusual it is, the more special it is. 
Well, look, minus 1.2 is, is bigger, right? Minus 1.2 means you're farther away from the mean. You, it means you're 1.2 standard deviations away from the mean as opposed to minus 0.21 standard deviations away. So clearly, Ted is much better in Slalomi than he is in downhill. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you compare data. But we're not done. In fact, let's go ahead and check out some more comparing data. All right, this Ted guy, we're not done with him. We're not done with him. Now, Ted's got a competitor. And this competitor is, is from Croatia. And if you watch the Olympics, you know who Luka Modric is. Well, this is basically the Luka Modric of skiing. His name is Ivica. So here he is. I'm going to just draw him because I don't have his picture. But um, here's Ivica. Ivica. Uh, let me write their names nicely. This is Ted. And this is Ivica. Don't worry, Ivica is happy. I'm not forcing him to smile in the picture. So, what is the stats for Ivica? Well, let's see his downhill stats. In downhill, in downhill, actually, let me write this a little bit to the left. Uh, so, for downhill, Ivica has a standard time of 100.42 seconds. And for, sorry, 44 seconds, my bad. And these are the actual stats, by the way. You can search them up. And for the Slalomi, for the Slalomi, for the Slalomi, what are the stats for this guy? For the Slalomi, this guy has a stat of 89.44 seconds, which is not bad, not bad. 89.44 seconds. The question is, who's better at what sport, right? Uh, who's better compared to their competitors, right? I mean, clearly, this, uh, this Ivica guy has got Ted beat in both downhill, uh, but Ted's got Ivica beat in Slalomi. But who would win overall? Who would win overall, right? So you can see that Ted has a smaller, has a, sorry, let me use a yellow. You can see that Ted has a less time for Slalomi, but Ivica has less time for the downhill. Well, who's better in their respective category? And who fared better in their worst category? So who would win overall? That's the main question we're asking. Let me write that down. Who is better overall? Right? Who would you give the gold medal to? Ivica or Ted? I mean, clearly Ted's got better stats for Slalomi. And Ivica's got better stats for downhill. But who's better overall? That's the question. Well... To answer that question, we're going to do something pretty special. We're going to find Ivica's z-scores as well. So let's find Ivica's z-scores. What's Ivica's z-score for uh, downhill? Let's go ahead and compute that. I'm going to make this question just a tad bit smaller so I've got some space to write. If I'm even allowed to make this thing smaller, I don't know if I can drag it or drop it, whatever. Bye-bye question. We'll write the question right here. Who's better overall, right? Keyword overall, overall. Oh, <clears throat> okay. So to find who's better, let's find Ivica's Z-score for downhill. So we're gonna take Ivica's time, which is 100.4, subtract the mean, which is 101.8 seconds, of course, Divide that by our standard deviation for the downhill racing, which is 1.83 seconds. And out is going to come the z-score for Ivica. So, uh, unfortunately, I do not have this on hand. So, let's go ahead and compute it out. So, calculator, calculator, where are you? So, what are we going to compute? We're computing the z-score, right? So, remember, that's going to be Ivica's time for the downhill. Uh, subtract the mean and what is the mean time for uh, downhill racing well we can just go ahead and remind ourselves the mean time looks to be what 101.8 so let's go ahead and put down 101 101.8 take that and divide it by the standard deviation what's the standard deviation 
well it's gonna be let's remind ourselves it's gonna be 1.83 seconds 1.83 seconds 1.83 seconds and that's gonna give us minus 0 0.76 as you can see and so we conclude that minus 0 0.76 is Iveka's z-score for downhill now let's repeat the same procedure to find his z-score for slalomi so that's gonna be his data value of 89.4 subtract the mean slalomi time for all his competitors of 94.2 and divide divide by the standard deviation 5.2 or 5.28 sure so what's that gonna be uh, let's calculate that 89.4 minus uh, 89.4 minus 1 oh I forgot it once again 94.2 and so divide that by 5.28 and we're going to get a z-score of minus 0 0.9 minus 0 0.9 that's going to be our z-score minus 0 0.90 and so we have Iveka's z-score for Slalomi Iveka's z-score for downhill and now we can finally compare these two guys oh let me just remove this red red border here and now we can finally compare these two athletes okay and there's supposed to be a minus sign here so don't forget that so how do we compare these two guys who's better who's gonna win the gold medal who's gonna win the gold well we're gonna add up their z-scores let's add up their z-scores okay so if we add up Ted z-scores what are we gonna get we're gonna get minus 0 0.21 minus 1.2 and what's that gonna be well that's gonna be minus 1.41 that's Ted's total z-score that's Ted's total score and how about for Iveka well for Iveka we're gonna add these two up so minus 0.76 uh, minus 0.76 and for Iveka we get minus 1.66 we get minus minus 1.66 that's Iveka's total score well, whose score is bigger in terms of absolute value, right? Whose score is uh, farther away from the mean? Whose score is more standard deviations away from the mean? All same ways to interpret the same question, right? So, clearly, Iveka is the winner. His overall score is farther away, is more standard deviations away from the mean. So, clearly... Iveka's getting the gold medal because minus 1.66 is farther away from the mean than minus 1.41 and so we conclude that the winner must be none other than Iveka I'm sorry Ted but uh, you know statistics wins the day so who gets the gold medal who gets the gold medal Iveka walks away with the gold and Ted walks away with silver uh, thanks for watching this lecture on statistics and we'll check you out uh, next time. The ambition plus MKO plus scaffolding equals learning. Me. We believe anyone can learn anything. That's why our motto is memorization is a crime. And that's why we partnered with Brilliant. Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. And the first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the Brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that, that you too can, can become the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love, love with math and science. science.